In 2021, a proposal was put forth to declare the ivory-billed woodpecker extinct. What followed was a resurgence of interest in the species as scientists, bird enthusiasts, and the media all weighed in on whether or not the bird was truly extinct. In 2022, several news outlets reported that the ivory-billed woodpecker was in fact rediscovered, prompting even more talk about this controversial species. At the heart of some of these 2022 articles is what some are referring to as new evidence in Louisiana, which some believe supports the idea that the ivory-billed woodpecker still exists. But is this evidence really conclusive, or is it just wishful thinking? Today, we'll be reviewing the newest quote-unquote evidence and giving our opinions about what we think about it. Hey everybody, Derek and Ryan here from Badgerland Birding, and today we're going to be talking about this new document that came out called Multiple Lines of Evidence Indicate Survival of the Ivory-Billed Woodpecker in Louisiana that was put in this database. And something important to note about it is people are saying it's a published paper, but it's not actually a published paper. It was basically put out in a thing saying like, we're accepting comments on this, this thing that was created. And so it's not like a peer reviewed paper in a journal. Like when the Cornell stuff in the mid 2000s came out, that was actually like in a peer reviewed journal. So like other scientists had looked at it and agreed with this. So this is quite different from that, but it's still interesting nonetheless. So we're gonna talk about it a bit. I have to say that I've seen a lot of news articles lately saying that the ivory bill woodpecker has been rediscovered. As yeah, the, out there. the news articles have really ran with this and just like, put out some crazy headlines. We can flash some up on the screen, but some were just like, oh, it's alive. Like the bird rediscovered and something was like um, first non-controversial sighting or whatever. It's definitely controversial. I don't know where they got non-controversial from, but that's definitely, I think, blown out of proportion as far as people agreeing with it or what it is exactly. So we're going to go through the whole paper, um, the whole just kind of thing that they put out and just give our honest opinions on what it's saying and what it actually means. And I haven't dug into it too deep yet. So a lot of this is gonna be the first time that I've seen it. Derek's gonna be kind of my tour guide through this paper. So I'm interested to see what this new evidence is. And I use evidence in quotation in, marks. Yeah, in quotation marks. So first of all, I thought we'd just go over kind of the difference between an ivory-billed woodpecker and a very similar pileated woodpecker. Pileated woodpeckers are fairly common. And so a lot of the times when people report ivory bills, the first thing is people say they're pileated, which a lot of the time they are. So some differences here in this graphic that I compiled using a couple images, um, the pileated from Brandon Trentler and the ivory bills from the Biodiversity Heritage Library. And so the differences between the two, the pileated is gonna have that dark back where the ivory bill is gonna have that like triangle of white and then the white going all the way up um, on the neck. And you can see the pileated has some white on the neck too. But in the ivory bill, the female is going to have a black crest that actually sometimes like curves up towards the front. And the male is going to have that red crest and then an ivory, ivory colored bill, of course. And then another feature is because ivory bills are in the Campephalus genus, they actually, since they're a little bit bigger, they weigh their body differently. So their foot basically like rests against the trunk. We're in a pileated, it's like out away from the trunk. And so the different genuses of woodpeckers kind of hold themselves differently. So that's something to also think about as well. And I feel like one of the biggest, most distinctive features is the white backpack of the ivory build. Mm -hmm. so, like, and that's so what you see first really. You would, you would think, and then in flight, there's white on the trailing edge of the wing and the ivory build where in the pileated, it's, it's gonna be more in the middle if you, can, if you can see it. So there's trailing edge of white on the ivory bill and like on the upper part of the wing. And then in the pileated, it's just that like a little strip almost. So keep in mind some of these ID things as we go through, um, kind of go through this paper. Okay, so starting off here, the authors are, are kind of important to look into because there's some fairly big name affiliations here. So we have Steve Latta, Mark Michaels, Don Scheifler, Tom Michaud, I'm probably not pronouncing these right, Peggy Schrump, Trisha Johnson, Jay Tischendorf, Michael Weeks, John Trosha, and Bob Ford. So the National Aviary in Pittsburgh, PA, that's where Steve Latta's from. Project Principalis is Mark Michaels, that's kind of um, like a 
organization from Louisiana. Like I think he's based in Louisiana. You have people from the Institute for Coastal and Water Research and University of Louisiana Lafayette. Uh, the American Ecological Research Institute, Museum of Wildlife and Fish Biology, um, Department of Wildlife, Fish and Conservation from UC Davis, um, some from Partners in Flight. So like fairly a lot of big name people coming to the same conclusion on this. So keep in mind this title is also very much just like it exists, you know, it's not really like there's not much ambiguity in it doesn't seem like they doubt the fact very much that it exists. Yeah, so like judging from this, it seems they seem very convinced by what they found. So the abstract is just like a little information about what the paper's about. So they're saying they draw on a 10 year search effort and provide trail camera and drone videos suggesting the consistent presence of ivory bill woodpeckers at their study site in Louisiana. Consistent. So pretty interesting. Yeah, isn't that I feel like that's the key word there is if it's consistent, then one should be able to garner a good amount of evidence. Well, you'd think it'd be clear if it's so consistent. Like if you're consistently seeing something in the same place, you'd think you'd be able to get something very clear. Um, so it's talking about the ivory bill woodpecker, its controversial status. Um, sometimes it was severely impacted by collectors, hunters, and habitat loss. So I have so a I'm question about, before you move yeah. on. Was this published very recently or is it not published? Uh, sorry, by published, I more just mean was it sent out into the world? So was this sent out in the world yes. recently or was it something somebody just kind of picked up and went, hey, look at this? So this was posted on April 8th, 2020. Okay. So that's so this still is like, like a, ways, a ways back. That was a couple of years. Oh, sorry. 2022. Oh, My mistake. Okay. Yeah. Just a month ago, this was released. So this is why the news articles are picking it up. And I think it was probably prompted because the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service proposed the ivory bill woodpecker be declared extinct, which it hasn't. There's been a lot of false information saying it's been declared extinct. It was just proposed. Nothing's been decided as of now. Make sense? Got it. Following okay. right along. Cool. So the introduction is basically just going to set up what they're talking about. Um, so they were saying that the other sightings have been discounted, even though there were more sightings in a certain area, like for the Arkansas paper, their team had that video. It's called the Leno video. And then people are like, well, why weren't there more sightings? And they're saying there actually were more sightings, but they were just kind of discounted. So they're kind of backing up this idea that people actually have been having sightings of ivory bills. So they were saying it's argued that a rare bird needs to be documented with higher standard of evidence and that people are saying they need clear photographs, feathers, or something to say that it exists for sure. And so the assumption is that if a rare species is found, it should be repeatedly refound, and that if it's not refound, the original observation is inadequate. So they're trying to say that because they've been doing this for 10 years and they've had multiple encounters, that that should kind of back up that idea that these other assertions are false. So their work took place in bottomland hardwood forests of Louisiana from 2012 to 2021. Search area was defined by perceived habitat quality, previous visual sightings or data and accessibility. So this is only about a 93 square kilometer mosaic of bottomland and upland forests. And then they're saying their area occurs in a landscape with more remnants of seemingly suitable habitat nearby. So they're looking in a place where they think ivory bill woodpeckers would feasibly be. Then they collected their data at irregular intervals. Most field work happened in October through May, um, which they're saying is the breeding season of the species. And then they use slowly moving reconnaissance, sitting in place and stakeouts of key areas, points or cavities. They didn't use boats. Um, due to a number and variety of, of obstructions in the water, reduced mobility and inability to also handle recording and other equipment, which is interesting because a lot of ivory build woodpecker searches had boats because kind of the habitat they're thought to live in is very swampy. And so it's interesting that they didn't actually use boats for this study. And some people propose that boats or the sound of something moving through the water could have even been enough to spook ivory bills. Yeah, well, it gets very Sasquatchy where people are like, oh, well, the ivory bills, they see things that other birds can't see. And they it knows have all these, you know. Yeah, so I'm, there's been a lot of talk about them being very sensitive to people and things that are, you know, not normal. So 
So you're saying yeah, they're supernatural. That's kind of what some people seem to think about it. So it's there's a, a lot of interesting takes on it. So they, including their field observations collected through the deployment of trail cameras and drones to record videos. Okay. I'm so, intrigued. Uh, yeah, trail cameras are interesting. Um, I think the problem is when you're capturing a bird, trail cameras are only used for big things. So if you're capturing something far, far away, it's going to look very small and probably not super high quality. But well, it sounds like a good way to get potential pictures of things that are ambiguous. So it's like you're you're right. on trail cameras, a lot of it's going to be a blur flying through the frame or a blob somewhere in the distance. One of the benefits, though, is you don't have to be out in the field yourself. Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah, you can get a lot of stuff done without actually being there. So it says the early images and their trail cameras were obtained using Reconyx trail cameras program to capture images at 10-second intervals. So just every 10 seconds, take a photo. So you don't need something to trigger it to take a photo. It's just going to take it. And then um, image quality was relatively poor, but the review process was simplified. Oh, um, Plot Watcher software rendered the time lapse in video form. These videos could then be exported in various movie formats and individual frames exported as JPEGs. Um, so they're just talking about the different settings they use. We placed trail, trail cameras strategically at sites where tight barked trees appeared to have been scaled. Trees were damaged or in poor health and expected to die or upright or fallen trees of species favored for feeding by ivory bills. So trying to find trees where ivory bills may be feeding on seems reasonable. In some instances, we focus cameras on the high branches or the mid upper canopy is the strata favored by foraging ivory bills, but results showed poor resolution due to distance and light conditions compared to cameras that were focused on lower portions of trunks and fallen branches. So, and then they're saying they made adjustments to the original imagery using standard consumer programs, including Photoshop and Apple Photos. I don't really like I, the sound of that so much. It does, yeah, we, um, we Photoshopped an ivory bill in there, but we did it to all the photos, so it was consistent. Yeah, it's like I'm, just a I'm sure it wasn't that, but it sounds a little sketchy. All processing except cropping was applied to entire image. There was no attempt to alter the appearance of individual subject birds. So... I'm assuming it's just something like lowering or raising the contrast or increasing yeah. or decreasing the brightness. Right. I would think so. But yeah, I and see some evidence. Where's the evidence? We're getting there. There's a lot of like a lot of words before we'll get to the pictures at the end. Um, so they've been flying drones. And so they basically what they did was they took a drone over the canopy and looked for birds that were flying over the treetops. It's thought that ivory bills may fly long distances over the canopy. And so hovering the drone at high altitude, usually just below the Federal Aviation Administration's maximum height of 400 feet, minimizes disturbance to birds and other wildlife, creates a relatively stable platform for the camera, which is also less blurring of video images than if drones were moving. So they did the drone stuff, and then they're talking about the equipment they used and how their perspective is different. And then they used different computer applications to look at the video evidence, and they used high quality computer screens, look at the drone videos, which helped see them more clearly. So the results, they said they deployed six to 19 trail cameras a year, resulting in 438,000 camera hours of activity. I wonder who looked Jeez. through all that, because that sounds like it is a lot of work. Interns. Our most important series of trail cameras, photos filed are sighting of an ivory billed woodpecker landing about 40 meters distance in a live but declining sweet gum tree on October 27, 2019. Trail cameras nearly continuously deployed on this tree since then subsequently captured photos of ivory bills visiting the tree intermittently from at least 20, November 29th, 2019 to February 10th, 2020, and then again from September 12th, 2021 to December 2021. Okay, so they're making it sound like they got very clear looks at ivory bill woodpeckers and then continuously captured pictures of ivory bill woodpeckers. Yeah, my, my thought with this, though, is instead of a trail camera, like, I would be out there every day with a camera. <laughs> you know what I mean? Set up a little yeah. blind. Because if you're consistently getting stuff that you think is ivory bill woodpeckers, I feel like you should be able to be there to document it yourself in high quality. And then they're saying trail camera photographs taken on November 30th, 2019, da, 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 da. 
Each show a bird with a clear white saddle on the lower part of folded wings, which is in figure one, which is a photo. Comparative photos of other birds in the same tree, including an unidentified small woodpecker, pileated woodpecker, and a redheaded woodpecker, confirm the large size of the target bird. While image quality is too poor for precise measurement, the relatively long neck aspect ratio proposed as a characteristic of the ivory bill is also highly suggestive. And then they're, so they're comparing this trail cam photo to other photos. So do you want to go look at the photos now or do you want to kind of go through everything? I want to look at the photos. Okay, well quickly, so basically they're saying they have other photos here they're comparing to other birds. So this is figure one. So these are all the different papers they cited. So this is figure one. So that's their picture they got with the uh, trail cam. Yes. So okay. these, I'm assuming are, yeah, two different photos. Trail camera photos taken within 50 meters of one another on November 30th, 2019 on the top and October 1st, 2020 on the bottom of a parent ivory bill woodpecker showing prominent white saddle present on the lower part of the folded wing. So the image from the top is extracted from a video clip. And so they're saying that you can see some white on the back there. Is there a way to blow it up more? Um, probably. It's like yeah. pixels. And I think that's what's frustrating to a lot of people is it's like, you have this tree where this bird is consistently coming to, yet this is the best that is captured. Yeah, I mean, like you could sit out there with a DSLR camera and just wait for it to appear and then snap a few closer up photos than that. Because if you got that, then all this debate would be more or less over. Yeah, I mean, if you look at that picture, as I was saying, assuming that that's the head up at the top, which it's so pixelated and green. It's def it's yeah, it's top. definitely the head. No, I'm saying top. like assuming that that's not part of a branch that's coming oh, out. Like it could gotcha. be, it could be like a redheaded woodpecker with its head down and then a branch yeah, behind it. It's possible. So like I'm not, I looking at that, I can't say definitively that's an ivory bill woodpecker, but assuming that that is the head on the top, assuming that that is part of the bird that's the lighter color, it would look good based on general field markings. But there are too many questions about what's actually going on in the photo, in my opinion, at least. Yeah. So this is this is figure one here, and then we'll take a look at. So figure two is then comparing that photo, one of those photos to different woodpeckers that landed in the same tree. So in this figure on the top here, that little blur is a unidentified small woodpecker. So I'm assuming probably like a downy. Something like that. And then on the bottom we have a pileated, which I think that arguably looks more like what they're calling like an ivory build woodpecker. Let me blow that one up. Uh, let's see. How's that? Yeah, I mean, if you look at that, it's got the same thing going where there's white. Are they saying that that's just the background now, or like why? I don't. I don't white? see white on the pileated. Well, it in looks the middle like there. light color toward the bottom of the bird. Well, so I see, I see the tail is just a very thin line. But like there's a branch there. behind it that almost makes it look like it's thicker than it actually is and has white on the end of it. Do you see what I'm saying? I don't see it as much in that one. In my opinion, this what they have looks more like this redheaded on the bottom. Yeah. Because you do get that white patch. Because I mean, if you look at that picture right there, there's a branch that's coming behind it too. Like there is a branch that's kind of curling around and there's Which no, picture are you talking about? The one that's to the left of the redheaded woodpecker. The one that they're saying is an ivory. Oh bird. yeah. You see branches coming from behind the tree. So it could just be branches and leaves behind it. Yeah. In and fact, it's like, it's really hard to talk about size too in this. You know, cause they're trying to say like, this is the size comparison. If those were taken from a video, why don't they just put the video up someplace? So it's actually part of the supplemental material, which uh, we'll take a look at. So they didn't, they did include it. But let's, um, let's kind of, there we go. Okay, so that's figure two. 
This one I think is kind of this one I think is kind of misleading because I see this on the left and I'm like, dang, that looks really good, don't you think? Yeah. And so the thing about this, this is an ivory billed woodpecker from Cuba. So this oh. is a known ivory billed woodpecker that they're comparing it to. So it's in there though. So you look at it and you're it's like, it's in oh, there. So that. like I see it and I'm like, dang, that really looks like an ivory billed woodpecker. And then you're like, oh, that's because it is, but it's used for comparison. And so like when you have them side by side, I feel like your mind is more tries to connect it. You're like, yeah, those are similar. It's like trying to find the differences in the two images. Like, the little, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. No, I know what you're saying. I know. But it's if like you, when you, when you look at that one to the right again, it's kind of like, it could be an ivory build, but there's also other stuff it could be too. Yeah. But also if you had a blurry pileated, pileated woodpecker photo, you could probably put it next to it and be like, yeah, it kind of looks like a pileated. Yeah. probably. So it's like, what do you want it to be? Like it's trying to turn, it's kind of like a, the Rorschach test. It's like, well, what do you see? <laughs> You're just like, I've rebuilt. They all look like I've rebuilt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's interesting that there is kind of this blurry photo that exists from Cuba of an ivory billed woodpecker. Cause like, I don't know, I see where they're making these connections from, but it's well, so hard like to definitively also, say anything. If they did actually see it, like let's assume that their reports are accurate and they did with their own eyes see an ivory billed woodpecker, then they probably look at this and go, yeah, it's an ivory billed woodpecker. Cause that's what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you yeah, know that true. that is a thing, it's really easy to take any evidence and say, well, this is clear proof when other at, people that didn't see it may not agree. Yeah. At this point, sightings just mean nothing though. Like you and I both know. So we've, we've done a couple things on ivory bill woodpeckers and we've asked people to send us photos and a hundred percent of the time, right? What are they? Either pileated woodpeckers or redheaded woodpeckers. Yeah. So we've got nothing that's even been somewhat close to being an ivory bill woodpecker so there's definitely people out there misidentifying them so just a personal account from like a person doesn't really mean much these days i mean i i guess if it was like david sibley who went out and was like i saw an ivory bill woodpecker it's weighted a little bit differently but we kind of need hard evidence at this point so moving on um this is further than we got in the paper so let's head back up Okay, so a series of photographs taken on October 12th, 2021 at the same tree occurred in near in early morning fog. Of course these, it's in fog. <laughs> these images of a bird with the typical posture of a large woodpecker are notable for the white saddle. However, the size and prominence of the white saddle changes with the angle of this bird to the camera. As it previously noted and illustrated in figure five, by Jackson. We also note that the intersection between the white saddle and the overlying black coverts is uneven in a way that might be expected of feathering. We interpret the image additionally as showing the white dorsal stripe. And then camera images obtained on October 14th, 2021 show multiple frames with birds exhibiting distinctive traits of Campephalus woodpeckers figure six, a distinctly crested woodpecker with a white saddle, or at least a suggestion of a lighter lower body is present in many frames. Most intriguing is that these images depict the distinctive morphological adaptations of the feet and legs of Campephalus woodpeckers as compared with Dricopus woodpeckers like the pileated woodpecker. The phenotypically similar pileated is one of the most unspecialized of the truly arboreal woodpeckers rude. While the Campephalus woodpeckers are characterized by pamprodactyl, a petal, pedal morph morphology that enables a forward. Okay, so that's just saying the differences in the feet. And then the feet are held outward from the body and are directed diagonally upwards and sideways, figure seven. All right, so we'll look at figures four through seven. Here you go. The images of a bird with typical posture of a large woodpecker, notable for the white saddle, Despite the heavy early morning fog, the size and prominence of the white saddle changed with the angle of the bird to the camera. We also note an un apparent partial white dorsal stripe. Are you seeing a dorsal stripe? I can barely make out anything from those. I think I see the white saddle on the left here. And so they're saying the white saddle's present here, but then when it turns, it's gone because of the, like, the way it's positioned. I just don't see why that wouldn't just look like a red-headed woodpecker yeah to me this looks like a very small bird like this yeah. doesn't it doesn't i'm not seeing the long neck no. like was in the other one it doesn't look crusted either it looks like it has a rounded head in my opinion 
Yeah, and this and it's early morning fog, so it's hard to see. Yeah, it really could be anything. I mean, it just doesn't look like it has the right shape even. Let's move on. I like figure five. <laughs> <laughs> figure five. That's the thing. All these pictures of real ivory bills, it's like, that looks good. Is that a no so yeah, there's a known ivory build woodpecker photographed in color in the singer track by James Tanner, 1939. Every time I see actual photographs of ivory wood ivory build woodpeckers, even those look fake. Yeah. Like, like this look looks like it, somebody like, just stuck it up on a tree. I mean, it looks like somebody photoshopped it. I thought so all of Tanner's stuff I saw was in black and white. So I wonder if this is like a colorized photo. Could be. I mean, the bird looks fake to me, which is really funny because it says it's a known ivory bill woodpecker photograph. Yeah. It's interesting and, in this one how little you actually see of the white backpack too. Well, that's what they're saying. Out. They're talking about the angle of the lighting affecting how it looks. And I think that's a valid point to make. Like depending on where the bird is, you're probably not going to fully see that white. But so this is illustrating how, this is actually illustrating exactly what you're talking about how the white saddle may be obscured under light conditions. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's a important figure to include, especially with the points that they're trying to make. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think so, it's an important figure to include, but I think just trying to get anything conclusive out of a picture in dense fog taken at a lot of uh, kilometers away, or not kilometers away, a lot of distance away. Yeah, and the thing about if you had a real good photo, you wouldn't need to dig into the minutia of lighting on the back of the bird to try to convince people that it's an ivory bull woodpecker. But anyways, so fig this is figure six, and so those are interesting. These are interesting. I think this one on the bottom left is the most interesting. I know it's foggy. I know it's hard to see, but like the bill looks light colored and that crest doesn't look distinctly pileated. Like that almost looks more like the female ivory bill woodpecker, like little Cindy Lou who so recurved you know crest. Ask if there's any way we can zoom in on it, right? Yeah, we can try. How's that? Is that picture on the right of it looking away from the tree? I think so. Like, I, no, I think it's looking to the right. Yeah, like a, away from the tree, though. Like, not in a. I think so. Yeah. Hammer on it. Yeah, those are interesting. Like, oh, man, just in the the conditions it was taken in, though. Yeah, still. let's look at the caption, though. So, this is where they're trying to talk about the position of the legs. So we'll zoom. We'll zoom out here. So. Illustrating the specialized modification of the position of the legs, the feet are held to the side of the body and are directed diagonally upward and sidewise with both feet wide and forward. Usually the angle between the tarsi and horizontal plane is less than or equal to 45 degrees and there's a obtuse angle of the intertarsal joint. Well, white saddle is not obvious in these early morning, very misty silhouettes. Several images suggest its presence. That's a little sketchy if you ask yeah, me. I don't know about that one. So this, this one on the left, I almost can make out the white stripe on the, the neck, but that can, you know, you can see that in pileated. I was going to say that could be just too, as, as it would be an ivory build. To me, this, this one on the bottom left is the most interesting. I'm not really like, so the legs, as, as far as my understanding is, in Campephalus, they're going to be more like right up against the tree, not like out. I don't know if we really see that in these. Yeah, I don't know how much this is illustrating what they're trying to talk about. I don't see any reason looking at these that it couldn't be a pileated woodpecker. Let's pull up that graphic again. So on the graphic, at least, you can see the ivory bill. It's more like right up against the tree here. I think the pileated just look better for pileated. I agree. I think that looks more like a pileated stance than an ivory bill woodpecker stance. Looking at the white on the neck, like you were saying too, if that is what that is in that photo, it's more mm -hmm. distinctly pileated than it is ivory build. Yeah. So I, as far as the legs go, I I don't know if that really helps their case. I want to throw this out there too that both of us would really love to see ivory build evidence. 
but I think that both of us also are very skeptical about every piece of media that comes out. So, I, th- I mean, I feel like you have to be, and especially with the headlines being on both sides, like the headlines of like, oh, the bird's extinct when it wasn't declared extinct. And then other headlines being like, the bird is, this is the, you know, piece of evidence that's going to do it. And everyone agrees. Like it's on both sides, it's just kind of blown out of proportion. So I, yeah. I definitely feel like you need to be, thorough with any kind of claims that are being made i would just say that we're definitely not ivory bill deniers but we're definitely not um people that say that it's for sure out there either yeah well i think everybody's on the same page with like it'd be really cool if it was still out there like i haven't met anyone who's like i hope the bird's dead so (laughs) i hope nobody out there has a personal vendetta against it maybe but picture if we go back to those figures real quick I feel as though the one on the top left looks the most distinctly pileated out of that grouping. The one on the bottom, bottom left probably looks like you were saying the most potentially ivory build, but it's really hard to tell what's random shadowing and what's just grainy pixels versus what's actual true color on any of it. Right. And the one on that bottom, right. I think displays more the pileated look of the feet. I'm assuming these are all the same bird, right? I guess I never, I would assume, I would assume so. So we'll go down to figure seven. So this is another one where they're throwing in known photos. So comparison of photos taken of apparent ivory billed woodpeckers in Louisiana from the study A and D with a colorized ivory billed woodpecker also from Louisiana, but taken by Arthur Allen in 1935 B in a pale billed woodpecker taken in Central America. So I've seen pale billed woodpeckers and it was really cool seeing a Campephalus woodpecker in Costa Rica. So that's the same genus. So they're showing the feet of that pale bill woodpecker and then the feet of what they're saying is an ivory billed woodpecker. But what they don't have is a pileated woodpecker yeah. in this figure. Which it seems almost like it's sort of trying to skew you in the way of saying, well, they do look alike. I feel like anytime you put stuff side by side, you're going to try to naturally pick out the similarities. And it's kind of like, you know, B and D. I think in B, a lot of the leg is all actually obscured by the tree. Um, it's hard to say what's going on with the legs in any of those pictures other than C. But I just don't think that this is convincing enough yet. I mean, hopefully there's more. Hopefully there's some video that sheds there's more. greater light on it. So are we just throwing out anything that the observers say basically as like, we can't trust it? Yeah. um, In regards to your question, I'm not sure where it is in the paper, but there's a part where they say that they had audio data and descriptions of visual sightings, but they weren't going to include it because they didn't think they'd be convincing. Well, I guess that's fair enough. Well, I would still like to hear them and I mean, see them and make the call I myself worth it like if they're the visual sightings i don't know i feel like yeah but the account of it's still helpful yeah like i would i would be interested in reading those even if they think it's not going to push the needle at all i think it adds to the validity of the report too if they include that but anyways back to where we were at so a final set of trail cam images offers further behavioral clues on January 9th, 2020, a female ivory bill was photographed. This image shows one bird with an apparent red. It's interesting that they say it's an ivory bill and then they say an apparent red crest. You know, it's like saying, we saw a beaver with an apparent flat tail. It's like, well, are you sure it was a beaver then? These trail camera photos involve what appears to be a foraging family group. Okay. Although distance learning are difficult, a white saddle can be clearly seen in multiple frames, including, and this is also a movie S1, including a frame extracted and reproduced in figure one showing a woodpecker with a prominent white saddle. We note the proximity of the three birds to one another in the video and their foraging behavior, including movements throughout the tree on the bowl? I don't know what that means. In major branches. Your parent to the... So it's saying, Ivory Bills reportedly show no indication of being strongly territorial. I don't know how if Tanner only studied like three. 
Yeah. By contrast, pileated woodpecker generally appear to be territorial year round, only tolerating birds from other territories at a distance greater than 100 meters. Adult pileated typically drive away young from the territory in the fall, often in early September, but anecdotal reports do exist of three pileated together during winter months. So I actually was out in the forest last winter and saw multiple pileated foraging together. So I don't think that's a real accurate claim to make there saying that because there's like multiple big woodpeckers foraging together that it could only be ivory bills. Yeah. You actually have a video. I remember of like three different woodpeckers in one branch. Or one yeah. Side. And that was from last winter down in Louisiana, but our observations of three birds appearing just a few meters apart well after presumed fledgling period is more consistent with an ivory bill family group. I still don't know how they're making that claim that that's like a fact group than an unusual pileated mixed species group, but should not be considered definitive. So at least they're saying like, it's not definitive. I guess. Which I, yeah, yeah, I don't know what that's <laughs> worth. Okay, so let's check this out. This is going to be supplemental movie S1 and S2, and then the next figure. So this on the left, look at that white. I mean, that's definitely something white. But what's tough about it is the entire background is white. Yeah, so, I feel like it's very blown out. That doesn't really necessarily mean it's actually something on the bird. It could be just background that's getting blown out into the frame. I mean, nothing else is blown out like that, though, like across a shape, you know? Although it's weird because it goes from the top to the bottom of the bird. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The bird on the right, its neck does look very thin which I think is more like a campephalus woodpecker would be. I mean, but again, it's so blown out. I can't out. tell anything. I mean, it looks like somebody put a bottle in a tree. <laughs> it does. And then, yeah, like what is going on with the neck? I mean, I guess this one looks like it has a thin neck and a red crest. Yeah, but the thing about it is if you, like, you can't tell enough about what that is to even show a regular human being and say that this is a bird but then you want to pick out <laughs> tiny little details about it and claim that that makes an ivory build. They could be just as much ivory build as they could be pileated. I mean, I think these two birds are either pileated or ivory bills though. I don't, I don't think it's anything else. Like they look large and they look like woodpeckers. Yeah, I guess. But it's just like, well, we'll see. What I don't saying. like this as an apparent male and female because uh, apparent is not the word I would use. I mean, I feel like with this, this one to me may be the one that I feel actually is possibly the most convincing, if you want to use that. Like, that may make their case more so than the other ones. Because I feel like some of the features would make more sense. Well, what I'm saying is you can't even really tell features because we're trying to look at something that's just completely washed out into the background. So well, and that's, and that's the problem. Is, and then articles come out and say that this is definitively agreed upon. Well, I think that it matters too whether you trust the people's reports or not because people in this were saying that they regularly or somewhat regularly saw ivory build woodpeckers. So they're not saying like we caught evidence of something on our trail cams and didn't see anything out there. They're saying mm -hmm. we saw ivory build woodpeckers. So if you take their word for it, you look at this kind of stuff and then you say, oh, wow, yeah, they did. But if you don't take their word for it, then you look at it and you say that could be anything. So it really actually boils down to, I think, the credibility of the people who are saying they saw these things. Yeah, and I can definitively say I don't think I've ever spoken to any of the authors or had any contact with them so i have no idea about you know how credible this stuff is well if any of them are watching this they have a formal invite to come on to the show and talk yeah to it'd be really cool to actually hear more from you know people involved with this but let's let's watch those videos you ready i want to see some group foraging behavior for sure <laughs> oh wow that's even foggier than i expected it to be yeah, when they said uh, fog, they weren't kidding. 
All right, you ready? Yeah, let's see it. So I think this is S2. So you can see some birds on the bottom there. Yep. They look like little specks. They kind of just vanished. No, they're still there. They're on the back, back side of the tree. Okay, so they're working that one branch. Now they're moving up. And that was it. That was it. So at the end here, that one is way up at the top. How did he even get there? Well, you can, you can see him going. Let's watch it one more time. It's so foggy. Yeah. Have you seen a pileated do that foraging on a small branch like that? You know, I'm not going to lie. I have not been able to witness a lot of pileated behavior. They are weird. They do weird stuff. So oh, I wouldn't put it past it. Yeah. Like they're just goofy. But yeah, like, cause I think some of the images were taken from this video. Yeah. And it's like, they must've done a lot of processing to it. To yeah, get it, sure. to try to see color. Well, let's look at the other one. I just don't understand why they weren't out there with like cameras every single day. That's what I'm saying. Like, cause all you would need is one good picture. I mean, I know people have jobs and I doubt this is anyone's full-time work, I would imagine, but still like, that'd be such a big deal. If I had a trail camera, I thought Ivory Bills would be on, I'd be out there. I'd be out there with a camera. Job. Maybe depends how sure I was. All right. You ready? Yep. So I, I think this is S1. These are tiny blobs. Yeah. Well, I so I watch in the middle here. I saw it move in the middle. I thought that it looked like there was something sitting on a branch too, because I thought I saw that move as well. Yeah. So I, yeah, like now looking at this, they definitely look like large woodpeckers. So. I'll give them that. This must be where that supposed male female pair came from. Yeah. So there's like, you know, a bunch of woodpeckers here working that tree. Wow. What makes you think those are big woodpeckers? What else would they be? They don't have to be huge woodpeckers. I mean, it looks like some of the branches near the end of the tree aren't huge, and it doesn't look like these dwarf them. I mean, they definitely look pileated to me. I mean, like this is clearly a ways away. Have, but because okay, we don't have a good frame for how big this tree even is. Well, so this I kind of understand what they're doing looking at the video now. Like this, can you see my cursor? Yeah. This is a small woodpecker, in my opinion, or a small bird. It's a dead tree, so I'd imagine it's a woodpecker right here. Okay. You know, that's like a tiny little speck. Right. So it's moving hold around. On, you can... can you go back a second? Yeah. Okay, never mind. So it's... It's right here. See, it's this tiny, tiny little yeah. blob. Okay. How do you know that's not a nut hatch? I feel like a nut hatch would be even tinier. It's How something small, it? right? It's like probably a small bird. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Probably a small bird. All right. And now when the big ones come in, like that looks significantly bigger to me. I don't know. I mean, it's bigger, but it's probably like a hairy woodpecker compared to a downy is probably not. No, I think it's definitely, definitely bigger than a hairy, in my opinion. I don't know. How do you tell? Just the way it looks. <laughs> just it's wide. It, looks wide. it looks wide. It looks wide like a pileated. Okay, so and just like yeah, just the shape of it. Look, ooh, that was interesting. I don't know what that was. Stuff just kind of flying. I think it was something front. flying. Oh, there's an open wing shot. Oh, well. 
I mean, to me, that more looks like there's white on the trailing edge of the wing than any of the other things I've seen. Hard to say. <laughs> you might want to pose that as evidence yourself. <laughs> Is that even one of those birds, though? Where did I don't know where it came from. Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah, like, why hasn't that been brought up? That looks way more... Like, it's at least something. It's definitely something. It's a bird, all right. So, I mean, whatever you want to make of that. Where is that bird before? Like, I'm, I'm assuming it was on the trunk here. So we're at 13 seconds. So let's go. It just kind of like popped out of nowhere. So there's one foraging down here. Yeah. And it does look like it has a thin neck. Where does oh. it come from? Is it the same one? I'm assuming it's a different one that's on the back of the tree. I mean, that could be anything. That's interesting that I never talked about that because I feel like that's like that in flight. It like, I don't, it could be something even just passing behind the tree. Like, it's not a guarantee it's even a woodpecker. No, but it sure is interesting. I mean, that looks bigger than any of the other splotches you were talking about. So that's either... That, to me, it looks on par with the splotches. But anyways, there's like three or four of them in here. This one on the branch over here is interesting. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of agonizing to see these things moving around and not be able to actually tell what they are. Yeah. Because there's like three here. But like, so say you went home and you saw this on your trail cam, wouldn't you be out there with a camera? Yes. <laughs> like the next day, I would just be out there all day. Like here's some more. There's another in flight. And that's like all dark. Right there. Huh. So let's get into the drone. Okay. So they made 2,590 drone flights and recorded 864 hours of video. That's a lot of video. We recorded several drone videos in February 2020 that captured images of large birds with black on the leading edge of the wings and white on the trailing edge. These videos were taken in an area where we had recent sightings and recorded vocalizations suggestive of ivory bills. That's why I want the vocalizations. No one ever thinks about the vocalizations for some reason. That's my, that's what my thing has always been is like, what are the vocalizations then? But I think it's weird that they're not putting that info out. I don't think it, that cause it wouldn't to me, it, unless it, it was bad info, like, which makes like me feel like, is it, is it just clearly not? an ivory bill then if they're not going to show us but anyways in a video recorded on february 25th 2020 parent ivory bill woodpecker crosses the field of view and banks upward into the right before landing on a large emergent tree i think this would be more interesting as video instead of picture mm -hmm. to illustrate the approach and landing we present the landing sequence as a chrono photograph the black leading edge with white trailing edges repeated in multiple frames, figure nine. And they're talking about second informative video. It's just two large birds in flight above the treetop. Shortly after entering the view of our camera, the first bird appears to engage in flight bounding, a behavior in which a bird stops flapping by temporarily folding its wings under its back. For a moment, it speeds missile-like before flapping again. Results in a flight path that appears undulating, which is common among woodpeckers. That definitely is. Although the historical literature about the ivory bill does not mention flight bounding, a photograph, figure 10, is evidence that there are moments when the wings are folded on top of the body. Just a clue to what an ivory bill woodpecker's bounding flight should look like from a drone can be found in a 1956 video of a closely related imperial woodpecker in Mexico. So let's take a look at those. 
There you go. Maybe that's not it. <laughs> uh, wow. Chrono photograph of a landing sequence showing an apparent. Why is it in black and white? That's an excellent question. Does that help? What What's a chrono photograph? A set of photographs of a moving object taken for the purpose of recording and exhibiting successive phases of motion. Does this show you anything? Maybe to somebody who knows more about chronographs. Or chrono like you could tell me that this is a moth in front of a bush. And I would be like, probably. It looks like modern art to me. I just like, I can't even make much out from this. Like this is maybe wings outstretched white down here. It's just so hard to tell. Yeah, I can't tell anything based on that, but maybe somebody with more experience with that medium could. So figure 10, a photograph by James Tanner of Niverville demonstrating flight bounding. So, I mean, that makes sense. Woodpeckers do that flight. I mean, if you showed me this, I'd say that that's probably like a pileated or something. I know, that's what's funny about it is that all these pictures of them, they don't look like ivory bills. Like the real ones? Yeah, like the real ones. I'm like, that's BS. That's the tough thing about blurry photographs. Because if you can, if you have a blurry photograph that is an ivory bill, you could probably just say it's affiliated because it's so blurry. Maybe Tanner actually hardly found any ivory bills and he just got tons of different media of affiliated. Well, he had difficulty finding ones that he didn't know where the nest was. So they're definitely elusive. This is video shot of an imperial woodpecker. Okay. I This on the top of the wing almost looks more like sun reflection. Like this kind of gives me turkey vulture vibes on the top left. I guess these where the wings are closed, you can see more like the white backpack, but that's also kind of just my interpretation. So that's interesting. Oh no. <laughs> so this is another drone video from Louisiana. This is like, I feel like the drone stuff is so. No, the drone stuff's terrible. Is, I feel like the drone stuff is worse. Because this isn't really, this isn't really, like that could be like a flying squirrel. I have to agree. I mean, it's not, but like the image quality is just, yeah, that's pretty tough. So that's, that's it for the photos and the videos, but let's look at their concluding remarks here. So this is the evidence that's been put forth that people have said has definitively been a confirmed report. Yes, but we're also going to look at the comments because it's open for comment on the site where it's been put. Did you leave so, a comment? I did not. Beyond Are the questions know? of... No. Beyond the questions of detection and documentation, our data offers insights into how the ecology and behavior of the ivory woodpecker would contribute to the difficulty in finding or refining the species. We know the ivory bill inhabits the most difficult to access habitat in the U.S. and that mature bottomland forests are a core component of the habitat. Our observations showing long high altitude flights by single birds and pairs are suggestive of species with a vast home range and accustom to utilizing dispersed and likely fragmented habitats. Home ranges may vary seasonally, but the ivory bill pair studied in the singer tract may have had a range up to four miles or more in diameter. Ivory bills have also been reported to wander over even greater distances and across cut over and otherwise unsuitable habitat. Large home ranges, distant wanderings across unsuitable habitat and high flights all suggest the need and willingness of the ivory bill to travel widely for patchily distributed resources. That may be to search for a suitable roost site, but more frequently it may be related to the exploitation of abundance, but ephemeral food sources that occur in dead or dying trees or branches. So they're talking about the habitats. Ivory bill numbers cannot be expected to improve unless many more large and continuous bottomland hardwood forests are actively or passively managed to exhibit old growth characteristics. Forested tracts must be large enough so that ecological changes caused by natural catastrophic events such as fires, floods, or hurricanes uh, will allow ivory bill's opportunity for diversity of habitats. The report contained here is not the end of our efforts. We encourage and energized by what we've compiled. We are optimistic that technologies will continue to improve our outcomes including documentation through environmental DNA and other physical evidence. 
We believe our intentional and systematic survey design is paying off through complementary lines of investigation. Our findings begin to tell a larger story, not just of whether the ivory bill woodpecker persists in Louisiana, but how it has survived. Why do people always say persists? Like they always need to say that it definitely exists, but how it has survived and why its survival has been so difficult to document. Finally, we also believe that our methodologies can be translated to other sites, offering opportunities for additional documentation of the species. Our findings and the inferences drawn from them suggest an increasingly hopeful future for the ivory bill woodpecker. And then they have acknowledgements to uh, Frank Wiley, who was part of Project Principalis, who um, unfortunately passed away. Um, also Bob Russell as well. And they thank some other people here. But uh, overall, what do you think? Well, I'm you convinced? not more convinced than before, not less convinced, but I have to say it's nice that people are out there at least trying to compile evidence and getting something. I mean, it's something. There's images of some creature there that looks like a large woodpecker. So, Well, I, didn't, I would say you don't even, not even convinced it's a large woodpecker. <laughs> Uh, some of them look like they have a crested appearance, like a pileated or an ivory build. So I think that you can make a strong case that they have captured one of the two species in most of the images. So, Yeah, and I know something that, and my talking with um, Matt Corman, who's another guy who's been out doing searches, he was saying a lot of this also comes to the conclusion we don't know a lot about pileated woodpeckers. Like they're talking about pileated's not foraging together, pileated's not making large flights. It's like, well, maybe they do do these things and we just don't have enough research to definitively say they do or not. I mean, in my opinion, pileated's are also hard to find. Like I live in a range where there should be pileated woodpeckers and I haven't seen them very often. I mean, I hear them pretty often, but I think I've only seen like a handful in my life. And yeah, they're uh, very common species. They're um they're very unique, and I would say we don't know a ton about them. Do you want to look at the comments? Sure, let's check out some comments. Okay, so this this one is somebody saying they have pictures and a video of what they think is an ivory bill. So they gave them the author's info. This person says, I'm concerned figure six of the top left image clearly looks like a pileated. What with the pattern of white on the head, it does look more like an ivory bill in the bottom left image, but the crest still looks like a pileated in all the images. I don't know that leg stance is a consistent enough field mark to dismiss the obviously pileated head. I'm concerned that including that woodpecker has lessened the credibility of this paper as a whole. Figures one, two, three are obviously the most convincing with that big white saddle, but when watching the footage they're pulled from, it's hard to see the saddle at any other point leading one to wonder if it's just a light trick. I want to believe, of course. She seems to be kind of in the same camp that we were in there. She even mentioned that same one, I think, that we said had the pileated markings on the neck. On your trail cam footage, I believe your best evidence for the white saddle not being a negative space found on the approximately six second mark from the bird climbing on the right side of the main trunk. This is the point that if you drew an outline of the bird as if the white space would be negative space, you would have half a bird. <laughs> a non-existing entity, especially when compared to the previous frame, which is probably the same bird. Draw the bird as if the white is a white ivory wood bill of the saddle, you have an ivory bill and the outline of the bird is slightly visible around the white. This would address that critique. It should be noted that in the fog footage, there are frames that can be pileated woodpecker. This can mean that, that there might be different birds present or that there are angles that an ivory bill can look much like a pileated. Since you showed the special foot adaptation, I believe you have ivory build images in this. That's interesting. You should also add distance to the tree in your paper. That's a good point. I saw a female ivory bill numerous times in Western North Carolina. Unquestioned about it. Um, no any about any it. report now, I'm just like, even after, especially after having people send us stuff, I'm way more skeptical about when random people are just like, I have them. Well, yeah, people are just always like, I see these all the time. And they don't realize there's actually a difference between a pileated and an ivory build. They just know yeah. a big woodpecker that looks like what they've seen. This comment says, sadly, not convincing at all. The variability of the white saddles clearly due to lightning, lighting artifacts. Figure one, blurry and inconclusive. Figure two, it's a mistake not to consider. He says foreshortening effect, or she does, whoever it is. Figure three, same image as in figure one and two, figure four, even worse than figure one. <laughs> figure six shows what looks like a pileated woodpecker. Judged by a facial pattern, wing pattern, figure seven, same as figure six. Figures nine and 12 don't show sufficient detail. And then this person's kind of arguing 
that and they kind of go on about that thanks for posting this jeff hill forwarded to me he's another guy that's done um work in the field and has claimed to see ivory bills too very interested in the search for the ivory bill let me know i can help welcome continued efforts to accurately record the biodiversity of bottomland forest in louisiana elsewhere but i look at evidence from this paper and draw the opposite conclusion the outlook for the ivory bill must be pretty bleak. A problem with evidence in current paper, as well as for Luno video and other records, is failure to properly eliminate the more likely alternative hypothesis that these are just poor views of common species. In this case, pileated woodpecker. It's fairly easy to download images of pileated woodpecker in similar poses that are pretty matched for the plumages and postures seen in these images. I posted on Twitter a composite of this with the images. Some of them I made a bit blurry to reflect the quality. I believe the images of perch birds can all relate to pileated woodpecker, at least there are no conclusive evidence that they do not. And if they could be pileated, they probably were. Let's check that out. Yeah, I agree with that guy. Okay, so this is Martin Collinson's Twitter post. I'm working this. So these are the pictures in the paper. And these are internet pileated woodpeckers, normal and blurry. <laughs> So this, the difference here on this one is like, I don't see the white that they're calling the saddle and the blurry pileated. What's the negative like I, space? I guess, yeah, the negative space would. So yeah, if they're saying this is the tail that comes down, yeah. that would kind of eliminate that. This one kind of the same. Yeah, I mean, this is similar to this one too. And we were even saying this could be a redheaded maybe. Yeah this one well we agreed the legs look more pilly i mean this i feel like this is even this is like a perfect match i feel like for the legs here pretty much yeah so yeah i think that's a pretty good comparison what do you think this is like the case we were talking about like where if you put pilly it is next to it then your mind is more like yeah right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I stay firmly in the camp that none of this is conclusive enough. Like, I think that you shouldn't dismiss it right away because you're never actually going to know. Like, they look like both pileated and ivory build at the same time. They're Schrodinger's woodpecker, basically. <laughs> As we'll finish. Oh, yeah, this... Um... Somebody says, the photos you shared are not very convincing matches for the Ivory Bill photos. I think you've shown how some of them could be pileated, but your photos don't have any of the white plumage across the lower wings. So basically just people arguing about it too. The most controversial topic in the birding community. Pretty much. Yeah, so that's the new, not actually published paper, but new, new stuff that's out there. I think it's interesting. I'd love to hear the comments from the people directly and i'd love to hear like about the sightings and then the like call stuff yeah i mean i think that's interesting that there were actual sightings because i think if you have this out there without any sightings it's just like we put trail cameras everywhere here's what we got i think it's less convincing but then it calls into question the credibility so if those people are credible and they say we saw these every woodpeckers and you know someone saw an ivory bill woodpecker but if they're not then you got nothing and we don't know yeah it's really hard to say so i guess my big question is like to the viewers like what do you think about this Did, was there anything that convinced you um it sounds like they're going to keep working on it i think environmental dna is, would be a big thing i've had that idea too they're kind of um getting further with it where you can actually take air samples and see like what organisms are nearby they're wow. currently doing it like with water where they detected a uh, like certain species of bird that was using like a watering hole that was like threatened or endangered so you can use it um for stuff like that it's getting better at being able to detect really small amounts of stuff so maybe that'll be the key yeah but for now the ivory bill woodpecker uh remains in doubt i would say so remains a mystery for sure yep still a mystery still an enigma still a cryptozoological creature for all intents and purposes well not really it did exist at least it was alive at some point if it's not still alive but either way it's interesting um we'd love to hear your comments on it and thanks so much for watching we'll see you next time on badgerland birding
What do you think about the reports and photos? Is it enough to conclude the ivory-billed woodpecker still exists? Leave a comment with your thoughts, and please be respectful. If you think you've seen an ivory-billed woodpecker and have photos, videos, or audio to share, please send us an email at badgerlandbirding at gmail.com. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.